They've driven hundreds of miles to see it. It's a historic moment. It truly is. They'd been jostling for the best view at every convenient rail crossing of the Union Pacific Main Line. I was the only one here five minutes ago. They'd been waiting for the big boy. Locomotive 4014 glided by 14 massive wheels turning smoothly. A locomotive was not under its own power. It was sandwiched between two modern diesel engines of the Union Pacific Railroad. It's a steam locomotive without the steam. 1.2 million pounds on that rail, 134 uh, feet long, lo largest uh, engine in the world. It's, it's f fantastic. It's so long, 132 feet, it has a hinge in the middle to help it get through a curve. Many rail fans like me never thought that this would ever happen. And to see it coming back on its home turf, where it hasn't been in over 50 years, is just something really special to see. Since 1962, this particular big boy stood still and silent on display at a California rail museum. Fans were ecstatic when Union Pacific announced it would renovate the engine at its shops in Cheyenne, Wyoming. The 4000 class is legendary, and it's been the most frequently asked question for 20 plus years for the crew. When will the Union Pacific undertake the restoration and operation of a 4000, a big boy? Making discreet inquiries to places where big boy locomotives were on display, the steam team found the perfect candidate for restoration at a rail museum in California. For many, many months prior to the official announcement of this project, we would be traveling with the 844, and we all had the hand signals where we would go. We secretly knew what we were about to, to embark on. There were plenty of unknowns on this journey, like how the hinged engine would deal with the turns, if the tracks would buckle under the weight, and whether the massive wheels would lock up. We're greasing all of the side rods. There's a hard grease that is the lubrication for that particular type of technology. Several of my staff didn't even know what a steam locomotive was, and they are learning that. The locomotive teaches you a lot. Uh, we haven't operated a big boy on the Union Pacific since 1959. So the infrastructure that was there back when they ran these is gone and the staff that worked on them, both operating and on the mechanical side, they're gone as well. Hundreds lined the tracks when it arrived at the Wild West Era train depot in Cheyenne. There were hardcore rail enthusiasts and families who just wanted their kids to see this behemoth from another era. Talk about a PR. Stunt. This, this is a master of all PR stunts, I think. Jim Ehrenberger was a staff photographer for the railroad. He remembers shooting the big boy doing what it was designed to do, hauling massive amounts of freight and coal. The exhaust was loud, the whistle blowing, and the, the, the ground actually vibrated a little bit. So it, it was a sight, it was a sight. The Rockies have always been a long, steep haul for a freight train climbing between Utah and Wyoming. Before 1940, that demanded two locomotives. A small fleet of big boys put into service handled the job on their own, especially important when rail traffic became a matter of national security. These locomotives were needed during World War II on an eastward train, they could come out with one big boy so they didn't have to switch a train. That was the savings. At the end of its journey back to Wyoming, the big boy was rolled into the steam team's workshop. It sits across the rail yard from the Cheyenne Passenger Depot. Back in the day, rolling this giant in for repairs would have been routine. Now to accommodate the size of the machine and the scope of the project, UP even had to rebuild the shop before it could rebuild the locomotive. 
these pits and the configuration of these tracks here make it difficult to work on a steam locomotive. What we'll do is we will remove these and we'll fill in the areas between and that'll allow us to work on more than lo one locomotive at a time and we can work on both sides of the locomotive without having to reposition the locomotive when we need to work on the other side. And getting to see the facility transition into a steam locomotive repair facility once again. That's been the exciting part. Dickens felt the 4014 could be a good fixture-upper. The boiler appeared to be strong enough to be safely fired up again. Converting it from coal to diesel fuel will take three to five years. They started by peeling back a few layers of cast iron pieces and parts to get a closer look. When you consider the locomotive operated from 1941-ish until 1959, it has a lot of life left in it. It also was operated for over a million two miles, so it, it does have a lot of wear, but the core components are in very good shape. Getting the big boy back on the rails is clearly a popular decision. It's a risky one, too. Union Pacific is betting millions of dollars that they will end up with a fully functional steam engine once the restoration is complete. I started taking pictures in 1953, and the last big boy, this one, last operated in 19, 1959, and I, I watched them all. They're marvelous machine. After riding in the engine for the last leg of the trip, Jim Ehrenberger thought the 4014 proved it's as tough as ever. I think it was built to last. If they take care of it, it was built to last. Now it's up to the steam team to make it all work reliably and safely. Barring some catastrophe or some other situation, this locomotive will run.